How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be creating this animation right here. We're going to be rendering an Eevee. So really anybody's computer should be able to handle it. We're going to be doing a little bit of geometry note stuff, but definitely made for beginners. And the great thing is once we start designing this, it should take less than 10 minutes to design, which is why I really picked what I picked here. Um, now, if you recognize the design, it is actually a remake of an older tutorial where we used an add-on called Grid Breaker to create those kind of random um, cubes around the circle. Unfortunately, that add-on doesn't work anymore, but I love the design and I want to be able to have people be able to make it. So that's what we're going to do in today's tutorial. So with that being said, we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so we are here in Blender 3.4.1, and I'm gonna hit Shift A, Mesh, and Add a Plane so we can have a starting off point. Now let's jump into geometry nodes and do a little bit of magic. Now, these 10 minute tutorials are a little more uh, fast paced. They're not quite Ian Hubert, but they're a little more fast paced. So I encourage you if you're beginning, um, either slow down the tutorial or just kind of pause when you need to. I don't expect you to be able to follow along uh, in real time for tutorials like this. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll start now and we're gonna click new here in the geometry nodes workspace. We're gonna delete that input and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get a grid. So we're gonna throw this grid right onto here and then I'm gonna click and drag, get my size up to 10 and then right up here, we'll go to wireframe view, click and drag and give it just a bunch of vertices. Cause what we're gonna do is break it up. So a lot of these are gonna go. So we're gonna get a shift a search separate geometry. We're gonna switch this to face cause we're gonna be deleting faces. We're gonna go ahead and get a gradient texture switch that over here to spherical and just drop that color into selection and that's gonna do this. So what I'm gonna do now is just scale it. So now we have this, I'm gonna click and drag and add more faces here. So now we have this circular piece, which is really the, what the design that I wanted, but let's go ahead and I'm gonna click on this guy, hit shift D, get another separate geometry. And then we're gonna get a color ramp, C-O-L. And the reason we're getting a color ramp is because there is no invert node in geometry nodes, but our color ramp will take the place as one because it's literally going to invert. So we'll take this color here, drop it there, plug color here. And then if we go ahead and flip the color ramp, it is going to act, it is going to do the opposite. So notice this gradient is cutting things on the outside. This gradient is now we're going to invert it and we're going to cut things from the inside, which is really cool. So now we have this circle that we've created. Now let's go ahead and throw some cubes onto there. So shift a, right up here in this workspace, mesh and cube. The reason we're not making a geometry nodes cube is because we're gonna bevel it. You can't really bevel in geo nodes um, as well. So sometimes you have to go external, but that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and get a instance on point right here. So shift a search instance, you'll find the instance on points. You'll see this cube up here. We'll drag it straight into the scene and plug geometry into instance. I'm going to go to the flat view here. So now these are just scaled up very large. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this up, bring this down, and we need to get in a random value node. So we're going to go ahead, get random value, leave it at default and plug that into scale. And here on the max, bring your max down till you like the size of the cubes. So I'm holding down shift to make the movement a little bit slower and more controlled. Um, so maybe, so 0 0.015 looks, looks great. So now we have our grid breaker kind of recreation. And then here on the cube, I'm gonna click on the cube here in the outliner. I'm gonna add in a bevel modifier. So now you'll see these objects bevel. I'm gonna say, give it three segments, bring in that right there, right click shade smooth. Now we have this. 
We'll go out back to our layout and we'll just move him farther out. Let's get our central object and that's gonna be an icosphere. So we'll keep it there. Don't click away because we need to go down here to the bottom left and bring it down to one, one subdivision. And then here in the modifiers, we're gonna go ahead and get a wireframe, make it really thick. And then we need to go ahead and get a bevel modifier and that's gonna create this really cool looking geometry. Let's scale it up. In fact, let's go back to geometry nodes and bring and bring this in. So now we have more surface area to work with. So we'll go back to layout. We'll get a, another icosphere. And then we'll bring up the subdivision on that and shade smooth, bring that to the middle. And then let's go ahead and hit shift D, get another one. And then in the wireframe thickness, make it a lot thinner and then make it a lot bigger. I'm gonna hit R twice to make sure there's no intersecting. Perfect, this is gonna be our starting off point. So let's bring this section down. Then I'm gonna hit Alt D and bring this section up. So now we've created, I'm gonna hit the period key here so we can be in the center. Now we've created this center point. What we're gonna do now is here in the curve settings, get our circle. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our camera. And then one more thing, empty plane axis. And all those, uh, we're gonna be making a camera rig. So here in the camera settings, we're gonna to go to the constraints, add constraint, and we're gonna do follow path, select the only path that we have, and then we'll hit S and scale it out. But notice where the camera's pointing. The camera's pointing that way, and you have to hit R and whatever. So the way we control exactly where the camera points is add another constraint, it's gonna be a track to, and then we're gonna go ahead and use that empty. So now you can see the camera's pointing. So I'm gonna hit, and so now I'm gonna click on this Bezier circle and bring out the camera a little bit. I'm gonna hit zero to go to the camera view. And then right up here in the outline, I'll click on the camera, click on the green camera icon and give yourself a nice wide angle lens. So something like this, and then you can bring this uh, Bezier circle up and down, and then you can use the empty to point the camera, which is very cool. So let's go ahead and animate our camera. So in your preferences, go to the animation tab, make sure your default interpolation is set to linear. And then in the camera settings, Go to your constraints right here, and I'm gonna keep it at the default 250 frames. I'm gonna go back one here to go to frame zero. So right here, your back arrow, and then the offset is gonna be the animation. So click on the keyframe, go to the very end and type in 100, which is gonna be one full cycle. So now if I press play, we have this. Let's go, let's go ahead and animate our objects here. So click on your object you wanna animate, and then go ahead and click and drag. Go to the very end, I'm gonna click and drag here, type in negative 360, and now it's gonna animate there. And we're gonna do a similar thing with this object here. I'm gonna click that one, click that one, and then type in 360, negative 360. Now we have these objects going. Now we're done animating. All we have left to do is light and shade. And so let's do shading first. Now, because we're using geometry nodes, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky. It's gonna be a little bit more tricky. So now let's go ahead. We'll get a set material node, plug that there. Right over here, let's go ahead and add a new material, make it pretty dark, make it metallic, and then select it right there. And so now if we go here to the render view, we go to the material view, we now have that material. Now we can go ahead and add a new material to this object, keep it very bright, make it metallic, make it reflective, add that material to here. And then in this middle object, we're gonna click new and we're gonna go ahead and make it emissive. So we're gonna get an emission node. Let's make it blue and make it bright. And then in your EV settings. So we're gonna go here to EV, click ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections and motion blur. Mm. Now let's go here to the render view in the world settings, we're gonna bring our color down to black. Shift A, we're gonna go ahead and get an area light. And then I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna go over here to the move tool, bring it up. Now we have some light. Let's make it very bright like this. And then maybe scale up the area light a little bit. And then back to the world settings here. You go to volume, and then we're gonna go here to the principled volume. And then play with your density till you like how much volume you have. And then in my, in, in my case here, I'm gonna give my light a little bit of blue. 
I'm gonna hit Shift D, I'm gonna bring it down, R X 180, and then I'm gonna give myself 300 on the brightness. So now we have our lighting, our lights. Let's go and play with the shading a little bit. We do have our animation. All we have left to do is just play with the shading. So here in the shading tab, so go ahead and click right here, and then we're gonna get a color ramp. Plug that to the roughness. We're gonna get a noise texture. Plug that to the factor. And then crunch these in like this. Bring your scale to one, detail to 12, and then slide your roughness up a little bit. And now you have a much more interesting metallic material. Go ahead and control C, copy those. Go to here, control V, plug that into your roughness. Now you have that. And then the last thing on this guy here, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click here, copy that hex code. We're gonna get a color ramp and we're gonna get a layer weight. Shift A search layer weight, plug facing here, plug color here, paste in that color. And then we're gonna paste in the color here in the black and then just bring it, bring it down like that. And then you can just bring that, bring your strength up and it's just gonna add a little bit of a gradient there. So when we go here to this view, it's gonna look a little bit more interesting. And I forgot one last thing. We're getting close to that 10 minute working mark. So we'll get this done quick. We'll plug in the color ramp here into the emission. Paste in that hex code. Let's bring a noise texture here. So we'll just copy that, give it a scale of 10, and then get a, let's get a mapping node. Plug that there and we'll get in a object info node set to random. And then you'll just bring in your color ramp, bring in your brightness. Now you have some random selectors. And now with that much work, we have a really cool animation. We're done, that's it. We created something really cool. Now on my animation, I added a couple things that really bring it um, crazier. I added some circles. Back here, I even was able to animate the lights. Like, so if you switch over here to 4D, you can actually go ahead and um, once it loads here, you can animate the position of your lights, which is super cool. So there's a lot more things that you can take uh, your creative liberties on and really take this to another level. But with that being said, let me show you your render settings and we'll be done. So if you click on this little printer icon, you can keep it at 1920 by 1080 if you'd like to, or you can flip it or make it a square, whatever you'd like. Right over here, pick where you wanna save it as a file. And since we're using EV, your likelihood of crashes are gonna go down, at least for me and my experience. So I'm gonna go here to FFmpeg video encoding. We're gonna go to MP4 and then medium quality to perceptually lossless render, render animation. And when you're done, you're gonna have something super, super cool. Uh, but again, these 10 minute tutorials are really just to kind of showcase what you can do in a short amount of time in Blender and have some fun at the same time. Um, but with that being said, thank you for watching. Again, feel free to check out Real Time Materials if you'd like, that is in the description, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.